Good evening and welcome to this edition of HPU All Access on Wednesday, April 7th, 2021. I'm Emily Nagel. And I'm Thomas Hart. An Amber Alert has been lifted for a missing eight-year-old from Greensboro. And after 18 seasons with the UNC Tar Heels, Roy Williams retires. But first, we head over to meteorologist David Kleinschuster for a snapshot of our local weather. David? Good evening, High Point University, and welcome to your weather forecast. As we took a, take a look at our local temperatures, we can see that down the Appalachian Trail that we have ranges up to the mid-70s, but the more we move towards the coast and the plateau, we're reaching temperatures up to 88 degrees in Henderson. So that's getting very comfortable. We're stepping out of our cold front. Now moving on to more regional temperatures, we can see the same thing up the Appalachian Trail. We're still having the maintaining degrees of in the mid 70s and out towards the coast, much higher degrees up to 88. Now for your daily look. So we are starting at a very comfortable 83 degrees and we are moving forward downwards and Although we are looking at very good temperatures, we are having some thunderstorms this Thursday through Saturday, so just be prepared for that. It will be a little cloudy on Sunday, but heading on to Tuesday, we'll cool down with a nice 74 and shady. Greensboro police say they have discovered a vehicle involved in a Greensboro Amber Alert where it was stolen with a child in the back seat. The Amber Alert was issued for 14 month old Josea Andre Petty when she was sitting in the back of a dark gray Kia that was stolen from the Valero gas station on South Elm Eugene Street. Hours later, a couple found Petty in their garden where he was in his car seat and wearing a jacket. After notifying the police, the stolen vehicle was found in Winston-Salem. Petty was found uninjured. Police say no one has been arrested or charged. For the first time in 18 years, the Tar Heels are led by a new head coach. This past Thursday, Hall of Famer Roy Williams retired from the game of basketball after an 18-year stint with North Carolina and another 15 years with the Kansas Jayhawks. During Roy's time at UNC, he led the Tar Heels to three ACC championships, nine Final Four appearances, and three national championships, one most recently in 2017. Carolina will be led by Hubert Davis, a former UNC Tar Heels and NBA player. Davis has been an assistant coach under Williams. Williams for the past nine seasons in Chapel Hill and was one of the favorites immediately after the job opened. It is now time to head over to Reese Harnett to tell us all about what's going on with our campus. Reese. Hey everyone, I'm Reese Harnett here with your campus update. This week started off sweet with the opening of the complimentary ice cream pop up at the Strickland Plaza on Monday. If you don't know where that is, it's near the reflecting pool behind Roberts Hall and the shop will be open from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday during the entire month of April. The month of April is also Asian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. So this Tuesday, the Office of Multicultural Affairs held an anti-racism workshop in order to address and dismantle racist actions within our society. There will be cultural themed programs throughout the month and all of those details for those events can be found in HPU Connect. April is also Sexual Assault Awareness Month, so in order to try and inform students on what they can do if they, if they have been affected or know someone else who has been a victim of sexual assault, Title IX has sent each student a required reporter cheat sheet that goes over what, when, and how to report an, an event of sexual misconduct. You can find this sheet and other information regarding the issue in the latest Campus Connection email. Now I know those are some pretty serious topics, but I hope that now you can all find a way to make this month one of acceptance and support. We'll be right back after these messages.
I'm not going to pay for this. High Point University is focused on preparing students for the world as it is going to be. There's a growth mindset in our institutional DNA. So while our campus growth is impressive, the true relevance lies in how HPU creates an innovative learning environment that fosters the entrepreneurial spirit in the minds, in the hearts, and in the souls of our students. This is High Point University. Extraordinary. We have many unique students here at High Point University with extraordinary stories. Reese Allen is with us with this week's student highlight. Hello and welcome. I'm Reese Allen with the student highlight <laughs> segment on All Access. This week we have special guest Dalton Lucas, who's here to talk to us today about his upcoming election for the president of the class of 2022. So welcome on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Of really course. appreciate it. Yeah, we're glad to have you here today. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your involvement here on campus and what you think makes you qualified to run for the class president? Well, thank you so much for that question. My name is Dalton Lucas. I'm originally from Roanoke, Virginia, uh, but I moved to Kernersville, North Carolina about two years ago. So North Carolina is now my home. Um, I've been involved with multiple things on campus. I think where most people know me from is from asking if they're registered to vote. Um, throughout the past three years, I've had the opportunity to register over 1,500 students to vote, um, which I'm really proud of, that initiative. Um, I'm also in a, the Bonner Leader Program. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Bonner, but we're students that conduct over 300 hours of community service every year in the city of High Point. So I believe that both of those experiences combined um, can make me an effective senior class president. Yeah, that's great. So active, so involved, both here on campus and in the community. So that, I mean, to me, that certainly makes you qualified. Um, but what other initiatives do you really want to make happen if you become president on campus? Right. Um, so one of the main things that I want to see change is I want a portion of our senior giving funds to go to a community, community legacy project to where we work with a nonprofit and develop you know, a playground or establish a new food pantry and work with that neighborhood, neighborhood group or nonprofit to, to make sure that we're giving them something that they can actually use. And I think that in order for us to give back to the, to the community that has been so gracious to us for the past three years, we have to make sure that, that we're working with them and that, and that our legacy extends long after we walk across the stage at Roberts Hall. That's awesome. Yeah. I love how full circle it is, you know, having your time here at High Point and then doing something with it for the community is really just meaningful and very impactful. So I love to see that. But, other than that, um, where can people go to vote? When does that happen? Okay, so hopefully for the last time, you can vote on HPU Connect from April 10th through the 12th. I promise I will never ask you to vote again. Um, so please vote April 10th through the 12th on HPU Connect. Thank you so much. Of course, thank you so much for being here. Well, that's all we have time for today, but we'll see you next week on Student Highlight. Thank you, Dalton, and thank you, Reese. It is now time to head over to our entertainment specialist, Danielle Glenn Denning, to give the inside scoop on all things entertainment. I'm Danielle Glenn Denning, and this is your entertainment update. Step aside, Nick Jonas. NBC's The Voice just announced that Ariana Grande will be taking over Nick's spot on the couches, and fans couldn't be more thrilled. Ariana Grande, who is arguably the biggest pop star in the world right now, will be giving her expertise and coaching advice to new contestants on The Voice season 21. Last week, it was announced that Ariana will be joining the hit NBC show as a full-time coach for season 21. With Ariana's vocal skills and performance abilities, her team will likely be hard to beat. Ariana is thrilled to be part of The Voice as she shared her gratitude in an Instagram post last week. Ariana will be competing alongside coaches Blake Shelton, Kelly Clarkson, and John Legend. Season 21 is determined to be a great season and we're sending Ariana the best of luck as I personally hope she pulls out the win. Finally, the cast of hit Netflix series Outer Banks have revealed that they have officially wrapped filming season two. Outer Banks took Netflix on April 15, 2020, right in the middle of the worldwide pandemic and quickly became an all anyone could talk about. Since then, fans have been anxiously awaiting season two, and now it seems a little bit closer. 
Outer Banks stars Chase Stokes and Madeline Klein took to Instagram to officially announce that season two has wrapped filming after beginning filming in late August 2020. We are a little bit closer to having John B. back and we couldn't be more excited. Netflix has yet to release a debut date for Outer Banks season two. However, it is likely it will be released in early July. Fans cannot wait to see what season two will bring. We'll be right back after these short messages. I'm not going to pay for this. University is focused on preparing students for the world as it is going to be. There's a growth mindset in our institutional DNA. So while our campus growth is impressive, the true relevance lies in how HPU creates an innovative learning environment that fosters the entrepreneurial spirit in the minds, in the hearts, and in the souls of our students. This is High Point University. Extraordinary. Welcome back to HPU All Access. I'm Emily Nagel. And I'm Thomas Hart. Let's head over to Grant Hines and David Klein Schuster for All Access Politics. Welcome back to All Access Politics. I'd like to note that this is the last one of yes. the semester. I can't believe we started all the way in September and we've gotten this far. I'm so glad that we could bring you the facts, insight analysis, and perspective on all things politics this year. As always, I'm Grant Hines, alongside with David Kleinschuster, the original host, anchors, and- Both of us, Dave, yeah. Yeah, looking forward and to it. And from COVID and the election last year, and insurrection on our Capitol in early January, to now having a new president, and still in the midst of a pandemic, politics is still rocking and rolling along with this pandemic. Absolutely So David, what are your general thoughts on the past year since yeah, we started? Yeah, so it's, it's been a hectic year all around. You sure know, has. With all sorts of riots, whether at the Capitol, whether Antifa for months, you know, going on, COVID's been a stressor, you know, that's, but that's really what pinned us all inside. I guess that's, you know, a lot of anger sent out, but it's, it's hard and it's difficult, but the thing is, is we need to recognize as a nation and our leaders need to recognize that, you know, we can't stand divided. And that's what so Absolutely. much of politics has become now. Yeah. And that's where we're struggling. And so the only way to truly make a difference is if we work together. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Well, going back all the way to September, we share with you each candidate's policies on different issues. And with President Joe Biden uh, being elected from that election, let's take a look at whether he's fulfilled some of those promises in his first uh, few months as in office. So as far as COVID, he said uh, he's taking COVID very seriously. He wanted to implement a federal mask mandate. Um, he wanted 100 million shots mm -hmm. in the first 100 days of his presidency. We've reached 150 million in the first 75 days, most of those being uh, first doses of either Pfizer or Moderna. Mm -hmm. He's also signed the American Rescue Plan into law. Uh, which included those $1,400 stimulus checks, aid for small business and first responders, an increase in the child tax credit, which will lift, which is expected to lift millions of families out of poverty. Um, but one thing we didn't see is that $15 minimum wage no, increase, which not. a lot of Republicans uh, did criticize and did not want. So about that. Yeah, so moving on with that, I mean, it's great to see, you know, we're sending and rolling out the vaccines. That is the plan that Trump had originally established. And so they were able to go off of that. And, you know, thanks to Trump's, you know, team and everybody working hard on these viruses, all these doctors and professionals, you know, that was started from the get go. And so we were able to accomplish that. Even Trump saying back in uh, November that by the end or by April, everybody will have access to vaccines. And that is what we are seeing today, yeah. you know, starting rolling 
rolling out. And so it's great to see that that is added on to it and continuing with that, you know, with the stimulus check, you know, it was promised a two grand to each individual, each adult. Right. And it took Biden a very long time. He was busy signing off over 40 executive orders and he barely ever has made a presence as his presidency. He, I mean, he's only recently done one or two public speeches as president. And so holding on to that, he didn't get that out for people in need, you know, he didn't get that stimulus check, which was $600 less than promised until, well, almost two months into his presidency. And so that's a concern now, for the Now, on people. vaccines, the president or the current administration did say that President Trump didn't leave them a vaccine distribution plan. Do you think that's true? Are they lying about that? Uh, see, I cannot confirm that fact. I know that, you know, whether Trump did or not, that is up to him. But all I know is that, you know, it's, it's to our medical professionals. Yeah. We, can't, we can't give credit to Trump. We can't give credit to Biden. Mm -hmm. It's the people who are working, you know, feet on the ground first to fight this vaccine. Yeah, and and I do, so they're who we can thank. I do agree with that statement. Um, and a lot in the American Rescue Plan was aimed at vaccination planning, distrib distribution, and education. Um, and of course, it's free to anyone who wants it, including uh, undocumented immigrants. So what do you think about that? Yeah. Because Biden, his whole thing was that, you know, no matter who gets it, no matter if you have health care or not, we just need to get shots in the people of arms to For get sure. out of this thing as fast as Absolutely. we can. Absolutely, and that's a great step towards that. But with that, Biden has been silent with the crisis at the border. Yeah. It is a crisis. We've seen video footage of it, and they're denying reporters in it. It has been denied by the Biden administration. Now, Press Secretary uh, Saki has admitted to it, slipped on it several times, mm -hmm. but there is an issue at the border. We're seeing percentages. It's the highest number of encounters in the month of February in over seven years, 163% increase of family unit encounters between January and February, and 173 increase from January, and 61% increase of unaccompanied alien children. Yeah, and so this is a crisis, and what is happening with the reports because people are refusing to go down there. But Dan Crenshaw, a congressman from Texas, went down to the border and he spoke to those on the field, on the line. And several sheriffs have stated that, you know, Biden's U.S.-Mexico border pullback has created the roads for the cartels again. And by bringing all these immigrants in, the issue is that they are, they are not being held, but rather they're giving a slip saying, here's your court date and show up to this court date and we'll be able to pass you through, but they don't show up to the court date. Yeah. So they slip in through the border and they're unaccounted for. And that's the issue, that's the crisis we're seeing. Yeah, and speaking of immigration, one thing I'd like to mention is that President Biden has ordered ICE to only focus on uh, violent uh, immigration offenders right now, whereas under President Trump, he said, you know, if you're here illegally, you gotta go. Right, right. And you know, former no acting ICE director Tom Homan says, I don't care if you like President Trump or not, direct mm -hmm. quote, you can't deny the fact that he has given us the most secure border in my lifetime. And that was from the former ICE director. And so, yes, we did have that hack down. It's not that we're against immigrants. Mm -hmm. We want immigrants. His wife is an immigrant. We don't want illegal immigrants, be immigrants because we cannot track them, just well, like they're coming in and skipping their court dates. Okay, well, we got to move on. But as far as gun control, that's another hot debate yes. we've seen uh, come up within the past few weeks. Um, obviously, COVID restrictions are getting lifted. People are coming out of the house. Um, we're seeing a spike in mass shootings. A little tense. Recently, we've had two, one in Atlanta and one in Boulder, Colorado. Mm -hmm. The one in Atlanta included uh, several Asian women who were dead, which uh, brought up the topic of was this a hate crime or not? So we've even had an incident here at HPU um, almost two years ago now, um, which sparked debates on gun control and you know active shooter trainings and stuff like that. So do you think there is one or several solutions to effectively, I guess, abolish mass shootings? Well, the thing with mass shootings is one, we gotta take a look at the individual. It's a health issue, it's not a gun issue. It doesn't matter what, you could take away ARs well, if you want. You can if take it's a health away. issue, then if he didn't have a gun, then I'm sure a lot less people would be dead. All right, so looking at knife statistics, if we get rid of all guns, so just like in the UK and China, across many countries in the world, we have lots of knife crime. So one instance in China, 33 dead, 130 injured in a white knife wielding spree. You don't hear it coming. How much? 33 died and 130 were injured. Well, what about with the US, not China? What about here? Yeah, absolutely. But I'm saying is it's a mental health issue. You take away the guns, you can't take away the motive to kill. 
but without guns, there's a lot less damage. You see what I'm saying? 33 dead, 130 injured. That was a knife, though. That wasn't a gun. That's what I'm saying. If you take away guns, they move on to different motives. And right. so they could use that as well. And with the issue in Atlanta, it's, it's terrible and as tragic as it is, but the motive, it was not hate crime against Asian Americans. The man confessed openly to his open porn addiction that he was struggling so hard. And these people, they were, you know, masseuses at a parlor shop that offered, you know, sexual, like, endings at the end. We don't know that, though. That he admitted that. And so he was going forward down to Florida to enact more crimes against the porn industry down there. And that was directly from him, Robert Long. But yes, wrapping it up, I know we're running short on time. It's been a hectic year and we're thankful for all of you sticking through this semester. And so yes, we wanna just send it out and yeah, thank you very much. One last question before we go. Will Trump run again in 2024? Will he win? Sure, he'll run. He'll run. Will he win? That's up to time. Well, that is it for All Access Politics. I'm so glad that we could do this this year. This was so much fun. Always um, a pleasure. It's been a fast year. I can't believe we got through the election and yeah. everything, and now we're in April. Um, I'm Grant Hines. And I'm David Kleinschuster. Thank you so much for sticking with us. Back to you. On Monday, the Carolina Panthers shocked the NFL world when they announced a trade involving, involving the former third overall pick, Sam Darnold. The former USC Trojan has been the starting quarterback for the New York Jets since 2018. Darnold was a star at Southern Cal, but has found limited success in the NFL. In return, the Jets acquired a second rounder, a fourth rounder, and a sixth round pick in future drafts. Darnold has racked up 45 touchdowns and 39 interceptions in his NFL career. An eight-year-old cancer survivor is using the proceeds from her Girl Scout cookie sales to give back to others fighting cancer. Lily Bumpus told CNN that she sold 32,484 boxes in her San Bernardino area as a part of her troop, which includes childhood cancer survivors like Lily, who, were, who was born with a rare form of bone cancer. She's been cancer-free since her first birthday, and her goal is to support others during their own battles with cancer. A Girl Scout spokesperson said Lily is the embodiment of what the Girl Scout program is all about. That is all we have for you tonight on HPU All Access. Tune in, uh, tune in again next week, same time, same place. For HPU All Access, I'm Emily Nagel. And I'm Thomas Hart. Have a great week, High Point.